Hi, this video is a walkthrough of a sample paper for entry three maths and this one is the calculator paper. So question one, Brett works for a printing company. He buys five packs of card and each pack of card costs £14 and 6p. So how much money does he pay in total for the packs of card? And I'm just looking for my calculator because this is a calculator paper. So what we're going to do here is multiply with the calculator five. Your calculator may not be as complicated as this one, but any calculator is fine. Five times 14.06 and that gives us 70. So I'd write my working out as well. And it gives me 70.3 on the calculator, but because it's money, I'm going to add the extra zero. So we've got two decimal places. Brett pencil, prints labels of different shapes. Which shape has the most right angles? So a right angle is the corner of a page. That's a right angle. Um, so otherwise, I'd sometimes a nine, called 90 degrees. Um, so we need to see which shape has got the most in. We've got a triangle which has got no right angles in it, nor is this trapezium. The circle certainly hasn't got any angles in it. This one has got two right angles here and here. This parallelogram has got no right angles and this triangle has got one here. So the shape with the most right angles is this one here, which is a pentagon, not a regular pentagon, but a pentagon because it has five sides. So. This is the one with the most right angles. Number three, Brett prints documents for customers. Each document has a number and he prints them in number order from smallest to largest. And we want to know what is the number of the second document that Brett prints. So we're looking for the smallest and then the next smallest, we're going to put them in increasing order so the very smallest one there i'm going to look at the first digit is 460 because 400 is less than 500 or 600 so it's not that one the next smallest number it's not 605 because that's too big 500 and something so the smallest of these four numbers is this one here 504 so that is the second document that he would print Number four, Brett needs 450 packs of paper for next week. He has 284 packs of paper. How many more packs of paper does Brett need? So you could do this as a column subtraction, but I'm going to use my calculator as it is a calculator paper. And I'm going to do 450, take away 284 to work out the difference. And it gives me 166. So it says show you're working. I know you can use your calculator, but if you write down the sum you've done, at least, if you make a mistake, you'll still get a mark for the working out. Next question, round 284 to the nearest 10. So we've got 284. We've got our ones or our units, our tens and our hundreds. So because we're doing it to the nearest 10, we're going to look at the number to the right. The rule is if it's five or above, we round up. If it's four or below, we let it go. Five or above, give it a shove. Four and below, let it go. So because it's four, we're not going to round. We're not going to round up. We're going to leave it as it is. So the answer would be 280. And then this is a question that often confuses people, but... It's saying use your rounded number to check your answer to question four. So what it's asking you to do is instead of using 284, use your rounded answer instead. So we could say 450 take away 280. And that, that's easier to do in your head. It might not be incredibly easy, but it's easier to do than using 284. So zero takes zero. Five take away eight, we can't do. So I'll take one from here and bring that over. 15 take away eight is um, 
seven and three take away two is one so we've got 170 which is close to 166 it's just sort of using a rounded number to make an estimate and check that this answer is roughly in the same sort of ballpark as the one that we got so if it asks you to do this substitute your original for the rounded one and do that sum question six brett buys packs of cards these are the numbers of sheets of card in different packs 12 24 36 we're looking for the pattern hopefully you spotted that they are going up in 12s and he wants to buy the pack with the next largest number of sheets so the next one in the 12 times table would be 48 Okay, number seven, we've got a chart here. A customer wants a large size copy. Brett says a large size copy costs 48p more than a large size black and white copy. Is he correct? So the large size colour copy is this one here. And the large size black and white copy is this one here. And we're trying to work out the difference between them is 48p so the first thing we need to do is work out what each of these lines is worth on our scale um, because well if we go to this one from 0 to 10 there are five different markings five different lines so each line is worth two two four six eight ten so if we know that it's a little bit tricky to read this going along you can use your ruler if it helps but I think we have got 60 here. So 62, 64. So the cost of this one is 64p. I'll write it down here. And the cost of this one is we've got 10, 12, 14, 16, 18p. So that's 18p. So we want to work out the difference between 64 an 18. So again, as it's a calculator paper, I might as well use my calculator. 64 take away 18 is 46p. Sorry, I took it away a bit quickly. 46. And Brett says the large colour copy costs 48p more. So Brett is wrong. It doesn't. But I would show all you're working out on there. Show the 64, show the 18 and write the sum that you've done and show that it's 46, not 48. Right, question eight. Brett sells business cards in a box. The length of the business cards needs to be 20 millimetres less than the length of the box. Brett says the business cards will be six centimetres in length. Is he correct? So again here we have two different measures we've got six centimeters and we've got 20 millimeters so we need to put them both in the same unit so it's easier to compare so hopefully you know and if you don't like i said before try and remember that one centimeter is 10 millimeters so 20 millimeters would be two centimeters so we, have, we can read using our ruler the length of the box. So we can see here we've got five, six, seven, eight. That would be nine. So nine centimetres. And the business cards need to be two centimetres less. So they would be nine, take away two, which is seven centimetres. Brett said six, so actually he's wrong again. So, but make sure you show you're working. Number nine, Brett and his logo. He prints it the wrong way up by mistake. He needs to turn the logo the correct way up. So you can see he's actually done it completely upside down. So because it says fraction, we need to make sure our answer is a fraction. And because it's a half turn, that would be a quarter turn, that's a half turn, that would be three quarters and back to the beginning. So it's a half turn.
Right, Brett designs a page in a newspaper. The page has length of 36 centimetres and an advert will take one third of the length of the page. Brett says the advert needs to be 10 centimetres in length. Is he correct? So, and I think most people were good with this question. An advert takes a third of 36. So to work out a third of 36, we do 36 divided by three. It is a calculator paper. So if you don't know your tables, which you should, um, then we can work that out and we can get 12. So again, Brett is wrong. Come on, Brett, we need you to get one right. Right, Brett designs a poster about a concert. He puts a picture on the poster. How far is the top of the picture from the top of the poster? So we can see we've got 50 centimetres down here, 30 centimetres here, so this is also 30, sorry for my wonky line, 30 centimetres here. So the picture from the top will be 50, take away 30, 20 centimetres. Don't try measuring. If you see that diagram not drawn to scale, don't try measuring anything. And number 12. Brett makes a sign for a van. The space for the sign is 2.05 metres in length. Brett makes signs of different lengths. Which is the longest sign that can fit in the space? So... We need to be a little bit careful here because the zero, the 2.05 might be a little bit confusing. What I'm going to do is add, make everything have two numbers after the decimal point. So I'm going to rewrite this one as 2.20, this one as 2.10, and this one as 1.90. And I think that makes it a little bit easier to compare. So let's, we want a big one. So we'll start with the biggest we can see which is this one now we can see clearly that's 2.20 but that would be too big 2.0 is larger than the 0 0.5 so that's no good um 2.15 2.15 again too large and in fact even this one here 2.10 is larger than 2.05 so the next one down, now we've got 1.90 and 1.98, it's a little easier to see. This is the next one down and actually yes, that will fit in. So I would go with this one, 1.98 metres as being the longest sign that will fit. Brett makes a delivery to a customer in the afternoon. He looks at the time on a clock. What time does Brett make the delivery? So it is 10 past three. Uh, you can either show that as 3.10 p.m. because it's in the afternoon or if you'd rather use 24 hour clock then you can say 15.10 and you don't need p.m. then because it's obvious it's the afternoon. 15. Brett sends parcels to customers. He has a list of the heights and weights of the parcels. It costs five pounds to send a parcel of height less than 25 and weight less than 15. So what is the heaviest parcel that Brett can send for five pounds? So the thing that I notice here is that it's less than 25 and less than 15. So if it says less than, it can't actually be 25. It has to be less than. So I think that's the mistake that a couple of people made. Um, but let's have a look for things that are less than 25. So can't have that one. That's OK. That's OK. Too big. Can't have that because it is 25 and the others are OK. So now we're looking for the heaviest one. So. Uh, oh, sorry, not the heaviest one. Well, we are, but it's got to be less than 15. So can't be that one because that's bigger than 15. Can't be that one. So now we're left with this one and this one and we're looking for the heaviest one. So as seven kilograms is greater than six kilograms. This is the one. So 24 centimetres and seven kilograms. Number 16. 
Brett takes the water bottle to work. He has one litre of water in the bottle at the start of the day. And this is what he has left over at the end of the day. How much water did Brett use to the nearest division? So here, the key thing to notice is to the nearest division. If you're like me, you, I was tempted the first time I saw this to round this to 250. But because it says the nearest division, we'll do as they ask and work out that each of these divisions must be worth 100 because we've got five of them up to 500. So to the nearest division, 300 is how much is left. So as he started off with it, um, not full, but he had a litre at the beginning of the day. So again, we need to know our conversions, but one litre is 1,000 millilitres. So if we started off with 1,000, and we are left with roughly 300. The amount to use to the nearest division is 700. And we're nearly there. Number 17. Here's a chart showing how much more Brett is paid each week than a person with the least wage. So... Sorry, this is what we're working out. So if Brett is paid £330 each week, um, we are looking for the person with the least wage. So we can see the shortest bar is the hairdresser. And again, we need to work out what each division is worth because we're going up to 300. Each of these is going to be worth 10. So 260, 270, 280, 290. So the hairdresser earns £290 a week. Brett earns £330 a week. So how much more is Brett paid than the hairdresser? And we can see that the difference between those two is £40.